Hello and uh, welcome to Shriners Hospitals for Children in Galveston. Um, I'm Tammy Robbins and I'm back again with uh, our Chief of Staff, Dr. Stephen Wolf. And uh, we talked to you last time a little bit about uh, firework safety. Today we're going to talk to you a little bit more about um, COVID-19 and um, resharing our patients and families that it's safe to come to the Galveston Shriners Hospital. So Dr. Wolf, thanks again for uh, joining us today. Yeah, absolutely. Love doing this. Great. Well, we want to, you know, before we get started, welcome all of our social media fans from around the state of Texas and throughout the United States. Um, we know you're out there and um, enjoying us and enjoying our content. So thank you for uh, joining in with us today and, and learning a little bit more about how we're keeping our patients um, safe from COVID-19. But I think we didn't, we didn't um, touch on this last time. Dr. Wolf, but tell us a little bit more about yourself and um, your background and what brought you to Shriners Hospitals for Children. I truly do believe it is the greatest philanthropy in the world because uh, we take care of all the kids that we take care of and we don't ask for anything from the patients other than we're, we're going to give to them. And that comes from the top, by the way, mm -hmm. and, uh, and very, very mission focused. And it's about the children. What does it cost? And we'll figure that out. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, but what we what we do need to do is get the best outcomes for the children, uh, and then the rest of our mission is we need to train other people on how to do that, so even more kids can be can be benefited. And then uh, going back to my research stuff, uh, that uh, it is our mission and uh, duty, I think, uh, is to improve the care of burned kids everywhere because we can take care of uh, you know several hundred here. Uh, but what we need, really need to do is advance the field so that everyone you know, all over the world, that they're improved by the, uh, uh, the great mission at the Shriners Hospitals here. So uh, that's, the, uh, that's, how, that's how it happened for me. That's great. And, and we're so glad that um, you know, you're a part of this and your, your dedication to the mission, to the children, um, to the education of you know, future physicians, as well as um, research into finding out, you know, how we can take care of kids well into the future. So, um, you know, you certainly have a, a, have a deep dedication to that three-pong mission. So, well, what we want to talk about here today is, um, you know, people are nervous where, um, you know, th things are um, uh, in Texas kind of gear gearing up with COVID, but we are still seeing patients and children still need to be taken care of. Uh, and we want to make sure that our families feel safe um, and know that they can come to Shriners Hospitals for Children in Galveston and feel safe during um, the COVID-19 pandemic. So what I want to ask you today is um, first a question from a mom in Dickinson um, who she's asked us a two part question about COVID-19. And um, she says, my child has an appointment soon. How safe is the hospital? And number two, what changes have been made to keep everyone protected from the virus? Yeah, so those are some great questions. And, you know, this is a, uh, a relatively new threat, but it's not an unusual threat for us in that uh, uh, infection is part of the game we play already. Uh, this is just a, a new player uh, in that same game. And, uh, and so uh, while it's, you know, has wreaked havoc in lots of other places. We really haven't seen that much here. And I think that's because of our, you know, the, the, the way we go about care anyway, uh, in that uh, the, when all this stuff started to go to take off, as everyone has seen, uh, we responded in, in, in kind uh, with everyone else and that, uh, okay, we're going to uh, test everybody. We, we test every child who comes here. Uh, uh, to see if they uh, uh, have the virus. That doesn't mean you're infected, by the way, or you know, have a, having the disease, if you will, but it's, it's, but it's possible to, to go to other people at that point. So we test everybody reasonably uh, to, to see if there's, if there's going to be a problem. If so, then we take, uh, take appropriate actions to that point and say, well, if it's a, a reconstructive operation or a clinic visit, hey, let's put that off for a little bit until we get this, uh, get this cleaned out. We, that's not that we are not gonna take care of it because we are, uh, and because again, that's our mission. Uh, however, we gotta time it right. And uh, so that's the, uh, uh, one of the things we do there, we test out, and, and we've had very, very low incidence rate of that uh, in a couple. Uh, that's it. 
and uh, but we're very much aware of that. And furthermore, fo following all the reasonable guidelines for uh, uh, protecting each other. And uh, so, for instance, we have wear the, wear the mask just because we follow all the guidelines of the CDC and everywhere else that are, in, in my opinion, fairly reasonable. Uh, and that uh, uh, social distancing, by the way, was always a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as far as you know as keeping yourself healthy uh within reason of course um, and uh washing your hands has always been a good thing uh that's none of this is unusual uh, I, mean, I heard uh, early on that you know that there are many viruses to choose from and uh covid-19 is a particularly you know bad one but there are many others as well and this it's not only that but it's all the other things too uh, and then the mask thing is really, uh, it's important to know from a, from a medical perspective, a mask doesn't protect you from anybody. What protects you from somebody is being six feet away from them. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so that's, it's really about social distancing if you're thinking about, you know, your protection. Uh, and then what a mask really does is protects, if you have something you don't know about yet, uh, protects others from you too, as well as the six foot thing. And so uh, I, I talk about this with people and it is, it's a, uh, uh, it's like a belts and suspenders kind of a deal. So if, if the, if the result is particularly bad, go ahead and wear belts and suspenders. That's the point. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and so you make sure that you decrease the, uh, uh, the uh, availability, if you will, of the virus to spread. And uh, that sounds perfectly reasonable. That's what we do here. Uh, we have uh, continued on through this uh, whole thing uh, and taking care of if, if a kid has been burned, they need help and they need it right now. Yeah. And so we have, we have not uh, closed at all to acute burns uh, and have carried on uh, at our usual pace because uh, kids get into things and you know, bad things happen to people and we're here to help them and have remained open for that. Uh, for the reconstructive things, you know, if it can, you know, wait a little bit, we're starting slowly to make sure, you know, and, and paying attention mostly to those kids who have the, who are suffering the most uh, to get them taken care of as soon as we can. Uh, and we expect this will ramp back up at some point. And uh, I th hope that what we do in the end is have uh, more attention to things like this and then you know social distancing washing your hands is probably always was a good idea and uh we'll keep that in mind well it sounds to me that um you know all of your precautions have been thoughtfully developed and, and implemented um in accordance with the cdc and public health regulations and that you were always doing these things anyway except for maybe the extra precautions of you know if you don't have a mask one will be provided to you screens before you come into the hospital limitations on visitors and that sort of thing so something that is not out of the ordinary for uh, the Galveston Shriners Hospital. Not, not at all remember we are our usual enemy is bacteria and yeah. they go down the same course <laughs> and so and so those those guys say if we've heightened awareness is, is yeah. what has really changed for us and then the, uh, the active screening kind of thing. And, and what other can, people may not know is that, um, you know, you're not treating COVID patients at your hospital. You're treating patients with burns and you're treating patients with, you know, who have reconstructive surgery needs. So it's not like you're a hospital treating COVID patients. So it's easier to keep the disease out of your hospital. Absolutely. So we, we don't do that. And if, uh, if we happened, if someone, if a child that we're treating for an acute burn or whatever, they can't really go anywhere else. We have things to do to, you know, uh, negative pressure rooms and things like that, that they got all that in, in, under control. And uh, uh, thankfully, we haven't had to do that yet. Uh, but uh, if it was, we're prepared uh, and ready to go for that. And uh, right now, I think as far as safety of if you are not are asymptomatic uh, at the, this hospital. It's not like we have virus floating around with us more than anywhere else in the community. And uh, and if you're suffering with something from a burn or a scar or uh, the other conditions that we treat, yeah, we're we're as safe as anywhere else. Right. Well, Dr. Wolf, I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule today to to talk about this and to reassure our patients and families that. Um, Number one, um, we're safe for you to bring your child to, but number two, that we provide uh, the most amazing care anywhere for children who have 
burns, whether it's a small burn or a big burn or um, reconstructive surgery needs. Yeah, so, and the, the rest of that is, uh, is now we don't do just burns as you know, any, any scar from any reason, it doesn't have to be a burn, we take care of that and, and can really uh, uh, hopefully improve kids' lives for those things. Yeah, others with the other kind of skin conditions that we ha happen to treat, uh, those are uh, things that we, we do as well. And so uh, uh, we're not just a one trick pony, we got a, <laughs> a, we have other things that we take care of. and. Uh, uh, I think it's it's important that we, I think sometimes, you know, come by and see us. We can help yeah. and see if, see if we can do something for you. Exactly. So, well, that's it for us today at Shriners Hospitals for Children in Galveston. We are so glad that you joined us today. If you'd like to make an appointment for your child to get the most amazing care anywhere for any of the conditions that Dr. Wolf just mentioned, or if you'd like to make a contribution to support care for our kids, check out the comment section of this video or find us on the website. Dr. Wolf, thank you for your time today. No problem. Thank you.